Good morning. Today is day one of my keto diet. And from what I can gather, keto is like um, very high fat, moderate protein, very low carbs. So like no bread, no pasta, no potatoes, no sugars, mostly meats and vegetables, stuff like that. And so this morning is my first day trying it. At 7.15, I'm at school, about to go in. And this morning for breakfast, I made something that I found on Pinterest. And it was two turkey sausages and a fried egg and cheese, which sounds really, really good. So I got in the car and I'm driving and I'm eating while I'm driving because that's what I do. And it started out tasting good. I was like, okay, success. This is good. And then the texture just got to me. It was like all mush. Like, mushy sausage, mushy egg, mushy cheese, and I literally gagged in my car. I was like, I can't eat this. I can't. So gross. And so, that was a little discouraging, because I was like, great, my first keto meal, and I'm gagging. <laughs> um, so, I also made this protein drink, which I'm struggling with. Um, also, it's just coffee and then vanilla premier protein and heavy whipping cream. And it's not horrible, it just tastes like weird cereal milk. <laughs> and I'm really missing my coffee right now. I mean, I can have coffee, but only with heavy whipping cream. So I had one of those this morning. So I was just going to try this protein, hoping it would make me full. And I'm starving because the sausage thing was gross so I stopped at a gas station and got string cheese and almonds so hopefully that will fill me up until snack where I'm get, where I can have more almonds I'm hoping the rest of the day goes a little better because my lunch should be good and my dinner should be good I just have to get over the discouraging breakfast It's been a rough day. So, I was okay until I made it to lunch. I made it to lunch. My lunch, after I ate my lunch, I was still so hungry. And that was like two hours ago and I'm starving now. I don't have any snacks. My head is killing me. I can't keep my eyes open. I have no energy. So I went to Starbucks and I got a keto drink. And it's a grande Americano. I can't even remember what it is. <laughs> With um, one pump of peppermint, four pumps of sugar-free mocha, and two shots of heavy, heavy whipping cream. And it's pretty good. It's, it's the best thing I've had all day, honestly. So now I'm going to class and I will get down around 5.15 and then I'm going home and hopefully my dinner will be better than lunch and breakfast because it has been a tough day. Good morning. It is Wednesday and it is 7.05 I think and I'm at school and so far it has been a much better morning than yesterday. So after the epic sausage and cheese and egg fail yesterday, I went home last night and decided that I had to just completely scratch that and figure something else out for breakfast. So I made these fat balls or fat bombs. I can't remember what they're called, but it's just peanut butter, cream cheese, cinnamon, um, liquid stevia, and a little bit of vanilla extract. And they're so good. So I had two this morning and then cheese, like a string cheese, and my coffee. And then also my protein was disgusting yesterday. And that was the vanilla premier protein. And this is the chocolate premier protein. I don't know if you can see it. But it is so much better. It tastes like just chocolate milk, a little different. So much better. I already feel full. I feel more awake 
which I'm going to knock on wood because I know that like the first week of keto you like crash basically but for now I feel good and I don't have a headache yesterday I had a headache all day long um, I forgot to show you my dinner last night. It, I made an enchilada bowl and it was so good. I ate it in like five seconds and I was so full. And so I decided to have that for lunch again today. So when I eat that, I will show you what it looks like. It was easy to make. I made it this weekend and it's so good. So I am more hopeful for today. I'm ready to get today over with because even though I feel awake, I'm very tired. I need a nap but breakfast was good so that's good so I forgot to record my lunch but basically what it was was I made this like enchilada chicken which was like um, enchilada sauce with no sugar in it and chicken obviously and onions green chili um, I can't remember what else but you just cook it all together and then shred the chicken and so I took a thing of that and heated it up and then I mixed it together with um, lettuce sour cream avocado cheese tomato and jalapenos and it was so good um, and today was so much better than yesterday energy wise um, as far as school, it was a kind of a stressful day. My mentor teacher had to leave and go sub for another class. So I was basically doing everything solo for like the very first time. And there were also teachers from other classes sitting in watching me, which was really stressful. So, um, but I did feel like I had more energy today. I felt more like I was hungry, but not as hungry as yesterday. And I was fuller longer today. And I I felt like my head was clearer because yesterday I had such a bad headache so then after school I had some salt and vinegar pork rinds because they're part of the keto diet and they're the closest thing I can find to chips that are allowed but I'm really not sure how I feel about them yet like the salt and vinegar taste I'm like yeah it's like a chip and then there's like that weird taste after that I'm not sure about. So I'm gonna go figure out what I'm gonna have for dinner. I will try my hardest to remember to record it and we'll see how I feel tomorrow on day three. So I'm at school. It's Thursday and so I failed the keto diet. Last night my dad made cheese sticks and I just couldn't resist. I was so hungry and I didn't feel like a salad was gonna cut it. So basically what I've decided about the keto diet is I'm sure it works, but it's not reasonable unless you can stay at home and make all your meals or meal prep, lots of different things you won't get burnout on or you just have a lot of time because it's kind of like unrealistic the amount of things you cannot eat and especially when you're on a budget and you're like constantly going lots of places all day long and you can't like stop and make a meal and sit down and eat it like it's tough for on the go and also with keto you can't have any cheap meals like there's no um, oh, I slipped up. I'll get back on track tomorrow. You have to stay on it. And to me, that's just, um, kind of ridiculous. So, obviously, <laughs> I couldn't do it. I'm still gonna try and eat healthy, but I'm not gonna be doing the keto diet. So, this morning, I had the little peanut butter cream cheese balls, a protein shake, and string cheese. For lunch, I'm having a salad, so... I'm at school now, so I'm going to walk in. I'm in the parking deck, which is why it's so dark. And also, it's so cloudy outside. So, I've got my first class starts at 9, and it's over at 11. And then I'm going to go get lunch with um, a couple girls. And then we have another class from 12.30 to 3, I think. Yeah, to 3. And then we have a math test at 4. Yay. So, 
it's Friday, and as I'm sure you've gathered by now, the keto diet was an epic fail. Um, I think I already explained this, but it was just a lot of prep and a lot of things you can't have, which to me isn't really, just for me is not a good way to diet because it just seems unhealthy and unrealistic to me. So by the second day, I was so frustrated and so hungry that I've just decided to just stick to just eating healthier instead of focusing on such a strict diet that isn't fun at all. So that failed. Um, so I am going to be trying to eat healthier, but I'm not going to be following the keto diet. So, um, what was I going to say? Also, so if you're unfamiliar with how college works, if you cannot pay for your school, like all of it, then you can apply for student loans. And so if your grades are high enough here in Georgia, I'm not sure what it's like in other states because I'm dumb. <laughs> but in Georgia, you have a thing called HOPE and HOPE is a scholarship depending on how high your grades are. And it pays for a portion of your college. So I get that. And then I have to apply for loans to pay for the rest of my school. So the loans that they offer me, is it's more than I need. And the reason I get more than I need is because whatever I don't need, they refund to you. And so you get that money for yourself. You have to pay it back once you graduate. But for now, since the teaching program is so, so intense, I can't really be working. So the loans act as my source of income and money for like food and clothes and gas until I graduate. And so it's by semester and this week my refund went through. And so what I do when I get my refund is I will pay off anything I need to pay off. So like my phone payment, my dad pays it for me. And then when I get my, my loans, then I pay him back for it. And so I pay for that. And then I will usually take out a portion of money that I'm allowed to get teacher clothes, school clothes, anything that I need, like water bottle, lunchbox, school supplies, books. I take out a portion and spend it on that kind of stuff. And then what's left over, I portion out for the next six months until I get my next refund. So it's a lot of budgeting, which I can show you how I do if you're interested. But since I got my money this week, I went today and I got um, some new teacher clothes and a water bottle, which isn't that interesting. But most of the stuff I got came from Old Navy. I got some leggings and a pair of shoes from Marshalls. So I wanted to show you guys because um, if you're on a budget and you like cute clothes, Old Navy is a good place to go. And so that's pretty much where I get everything from. So I'll show you what I got if you are interested. So I got this water bottle from Marshalls. It needs to be washed really bad, but it's so cute. This is like silicone on the outside and then it has a silicone straw, which I'm not sure how clean these stay. Not really sure, but I got this to hold water in because I had a water bottle that I was using and it leaked a lot and this is like super tight around the straw. So I'm hoping that doesn't leak like when I put it in my teacher bag. So I got that. And I also got this, I also got this coffee mug. It is super heavy duty, it's by Thermos. I got it from Target. It was $20, which to me is a lot for a coffee mug, but I needed one that wasn't spilling and the lid won't pop off, so I got that. Okay, so this is the first outfit. Um, I just got this white, plain, it's a little bit see-through, I'm gonna have to wear a tank top, um, sweater. And it's a little bit longer in the back. And I liked it because it was kind of flowier, not so tight. And I thought it was a good length. And then I got these pixie pants. And they're like a, a blush color. I guess that's what you would call that. Like a blush color. And then these shoes, they're so cute and so comfortable. I got these from Marshalls. And I got them because I like the color. And also because they have good support. And they're stretchy right here, like the elastic. So those are good teacher shoes. 
And then I also got the same sweater in this blue and white patterny color. It's like royal blue. It's really pretty. And I know it doesn't go with these pants, but just so you get the idea. Also, again, longer in the back. It's just super simple. It can be worn by itself or with something else. So I also got this black tank top, which is just plain, really thin, v-neck, flowy. And I got this cardigan to go with it. Um, I also thought that these could both go with a lot of other things. So I could put this cardigan over other things and I could wear this tank top other, under other cardigans. So I like that. And this I would just wear with like black shoes, black flats or something. And then the last thing I got are these pants, which are also pixie pants. I love them. They're super comfortable. And these are like, I don't know if you can really tell, but they're like a navy blue. They're like more washed out looking and I really like that color. There's still a few more things that I need to get. I need to get a rain jacket. I have a rain jacket, but it's a little bit small. I've had it for a really long time. And I really need to get a rain jacket because part of student teaching is you have to do morning duty and afternoon duty and standing outside with the car riders or the buses. So if you don't have a good rain jacket, it sucks. And I also need a good winter jacket because it's freezing outside right now in the mornings. And we have to stand out there for like a good 40 minutes. And um, my mentor teacher has like this really good giant puffy jacket with like the furry hood. And I need something like that because I have been freezing in the mornings. So I'll probably order those because I'm lazy and I didn't see anything that I like today at Marshall's or Old Navy. So I'll probably order something. Also, I forgot to mention I got these leggings at Marshall's, $14.99. They're so soft and I love them. They're kind of like a bluish color. They look black on here, but they're like a navy blue color. And I got these because um, student teaching, we still have class, obviously. And the easiest thing for me when I have class is to just throw on a pair of leggings and t-shirt or sweatshirt. And I needed another pair. Also, we found out that this semester, instead of having three days of placement at our schools and two days of class, um, one of the days we have class, we are going to be going to another elementary school to do case studies with students. So that's four days now that we have to dress up and look cute, which is why I got some more teacher clothes today. Also though, I'm just like collecting clothes over these two years of student teaching so that when I am a teacher, I don't have to like go crazy and buy a whole bunch of teacher clothes, which I recommend you do. Um, another thing that I recommend you do and my first mentor teacher actually told me this. She told me that the best, one of the best things that you can do when you're student teaching is for Christmas, your birthday, whatever. If anyone wants to give you something or ask you if there's anything you need or anything you want, always say kids books because schools do not provide you with a library. Like they have a school library, but like teachers own libraries, they have to bring that. They have to supply it for their kids. So it's really expensive if you start out as a first year teacher with no books and you have to like start buying books over the first year. So I have started collecting books. I have a pretty good collection, but one tip that I have for any student teachers or even if you are a teacher already, Goodwill has so many kids books and they're literally like a dollar like in the, the soft covers are like 77 cents. So I went to Goodwill yesterday and I got seven kids books for $10, which is crazy because some of the kids books, like the good ones are like $20 and Goodwill has some good ones. Like, I mean, unless you're like, you don't want books that might have some wear and tear or like somebody's name written in them. But I mean, they're gonna get wear and tear in your classroom anyway. So that is such a good tip. Get your books at Goodwill, raid Goodwill. Like they have so many good books. They have chapter books, they have Junie B. Jones, they have those, they have Cat in the Hat, they have all the classic like mentor texts, which if you don't know what that is, 
um, a mentor text is like something, a book that you can read to kids and also pair with a lesson. And so there's a lot of those books, like the high quality, the good books at Goodwill, the ones with medals. And so I will show you the books I got at Goodwill yesterday. So these are the books I got. This one I thought looked so cute, especially if you have any boys in your class who um, maybe are obsessed with dino dinosaurs, but not so much obsessed with reading. This might be a helpful one. And it's scholastic, so it's gotta be good. I also found this one, Ella Sarah Gets Dressed, and it has the medal, it has the Caldecott medal, so of course I grabbed it, because I'm sure that I can find some good lessons. To go along with this. Um, this one also has a medal, it has the Caldecott medal, the Hello Goodbye window, which I thought was so cute. And this one is in such good condition. So I got that one. And this I got because I loved this book when I was little. My parents read it to me all the time. And um, it is in great condition. Literally, it looks like it's like never been read. And I got it for like a dollar, which is so crazy. And it still has the little paper thing. Like, that's awesome. And this one is so cute. This one was also a dollar. And it was originally $15.99. And I got it for a dollar. And it's in great condition. So, this one, I don't really know what that is, but it doesn't matter to me. Um, Sammy and the Dinosaurs Say Ah. Very cute. Again, has some writing in it. Hmm. Oh, it came from a school. Interesting. And then the last one I got was this one because I thought it was so cute. Dr. Ted. And it's in great condition too. And kids love stuff like this with cute little animals on it. So, so that's probably going to be the end of this video um, this week. My plan for the video was to be starting the keto diet while student teaching, which obviously was an epic fail because I only lasted two days. So this video turned into something completely different. I hope that you liked it. I know it was a little bit different from my first two student teaching videos. So if you like this more or you like the other version more where it's more of like a come around with me through the day kind of video, just let me know and I'll do either one.